Well, hi, good evening. Hope to start in time on a project which is uh, more related to reaching out to one and all on this important topic to reach out to colleagues in medicine, to reach out to uh, our colleagues in society who need to be looking at this important aspect of uh, taking the subject of urology to different heights altogether. Friends, uh, we're speaking uh, after a long time and we're trying to meet all of you across this important platform. Does urology consult get postponed or does urology consult get missed out is what is an important aspect that we need to look into today. Friends, uh, there's nothing new about it. Let's uh, talk in a situation which gives us an idea about what does it mean when things get postponed and we know what postponement means. So is it time to take a urology consult to the front row seat and look at aspects of care? You could actually type your questions because it's all about interaction, though it's a one-way ticket, but all your questions are so welcome. I would look at that important aspect of questions as I complete this kind of crisp talk, which you may have heard in the past, but just to look at that, somebody who postponed or somebody who missed out a urology consult probably did not know because the awareness was missing or probably knew little about it and looked at that it's possibly not required to be treated right now. Don't forget that you as a urology, so dial U for urology comes very low down in the alphabetical order because either bothersomeness brings you to a urologist or probably something very immediate emergency brings to your urologist. So let's kickstart this program today. Thanks, Dr. Reddy for having organized this in a very short notice. It is more to reach our colleagues in practice. It's more to reach the society in our practice. Otherwise, how do we make this happen for everybody that he doesn't miss out and doesn't postpone himself? So let's talk very basics and your questions are welcome. So keep your questions active and live. I carry greetings from Kokelabin Hospital where I sit in the Department of Urology having completed today's close to 11 and a half, 12 hours of work between OTs and outpatient departments looking at postponed consults and missed out consults, some emergencies and some routine cases that we continue to see as colleagues in practice. That quality of life matters in each subject. Every quality of life matters to us at the medical fraternities who have joined together and at Coquilabin Hospital and in urology. We look at improving the quality of life of individuals whom we really need to probably enthuse and don't postpone your consults. If you have a urological problem, see your doctor. Your doctors as general practitioners, your doctors as family physicians, your doctors as urologists would take an immediate charge compared to what you may not be knowing. And that's what today's issue is. In urological consult, never be at crossroads. Think of moving forward in the direction that suits your body best because you have one body, one life, and it needs to be safeguarded and polished as you continue to do better and better. So in a urological consult, have we come a long way yet? So general health has changed dramatically for all of us because the kind of quality of life diseases which we want to address on one side also allows us to improve the quality of life. And therefore, we look at the entire aspect of the mental health, the bone and joints, the body weight, the obesity, the blood pressure, the diabetes, thyroid issues, all those aspects are one which actually gradually slip into our lifestyle. So we have more and more friends of these kind of diseases where your arthritis, your Parkinsonism, where we've got kidneys and brain issues and these things too, Adam. But in your logical health, are we under control? Are our kidneys, bladders and prostate, all the three organs deep inside the body under our control or under the control of safety of health of our doctors who are taking care of us? So we look at that large aspect, which we will like to talk on, more to enthuse you to look at not missing out concerns, more to look at our colleagues in general practice across the city of Mumbai and all around to look at that when we see such cases, we go aggressive. If somebody comes with a urinary infection, somebody comes with urinary incontinence, somebody comes with nocturia or getting up multiple times at night, a child comes between 6 to 15 years and is bedwetting twice at night or twice a week, or there's obstruction to the urinary flow, which happens perhaps because there is a stricture or a blockage or there's a metal stenosis or there's a tight phimosis or there's a prostate occluding the urinary passage or there are cancers or there's a bleeding happening around or there are age-related changes happening. Do we need to lose control or do we need to be aggressively active? Yes, because no patient would be coming on day hour one of the disease process. It has happened. They've obviously seen somebody. They have had their medicines of the past. They would look at reaching out the first doctors available. And the first doctors available are our colleagues in general practice, our physicians. And we happen to be hand-holding the subject for them in the society. And therefore, 
a salute to all doctors who joined today and who probably help us out in taking the subject forward for the society where you reach more strongly. I sit in this office morning till midnight, looking at helping out colleagues, helping out patients, helping out needy, at the same time, doing a balance of niche areas of work on reconstructions and robotics on the other side, looking at not letting people missing out their urological concerns. I continue speaking on my YouTube channel and making more and more people aware that quality of life diseases cannot be left off. And all that I talked about, infections, erectile dysfunction, incontinence, nocturia, bedwetting, obstruction to flow. These are all quality of life diseases which actually can progress in our lifestyle. So friends, while there are winds of change, lots of changes happening every day of our life on the news, there are also wings of change and we can see that the red thing disappearing from there and the jet airways is coming back, which means it is time to take back our health to the front row seat. There was a time when this was going the other way around and now we're getting the jet airways back. That means we're getting our health back and that's the kind of picture which was gradually moving on and somebody could halt it. So these are real times we live in. The real times of 2022 is beyond the pandemic. That's the time in the outpatient department, be it a, a general practitioner's clinic, be it a family physician's clinic, be it a specialist clinic. Don't forget that every patient tells a story. A story of his suffering, so a story of his requirement, story of his needs. And it could be a story of immediate or a delayed presentation. They could tell you that this problem is for the last six months and I've tried what I could do best. Or I probably looked at it, it did not matter to me. Or something happened today morning. I could not pass urine or I was bleeding in urine and I've just come and probably want to see you. So every patient tells a story of an immediate or a delayed presentation. And it's our responsibility to take it forward as colleagues in the subject absolutely to the level. And therefore, every doctor lives a passion and that's his only purpose. His purpose is about the dedication and inspiration which are a part of the Hippocratic Oath. And he wants to really bring this maturity into it where people come in time and when they come in time, we really take charge of this. So it's an ultimate sacrifice your doctor does in those unearthly hours and circumstances. It could be a Saturday night, it could be a New Year's night, or it could be a holiday night. Your faith in doctor and healthcare therefore has moved mountains and therefore salute to all doctors who actually take this charge of doing urology. And I know that every doctor who joins this today does incontinence, does urinary tract infection, does prostate issues, looks at all those aspects which we probably talk about. And if we could safeguard all this, we are safeguarding the health of urological aspects. Therefore, your awareness and your motivation into these early presentations is all that matters. And therefore, why miss or why postpone a visit in a urology to the doctor you see? These are real times where you don't want to postpone something. You have one body, you have got all the grace of the best doctors available across the city, across the country, and at odd times and odd hours. You've got the team available. So, therefore, on health grounds, that you move so well, we still have miles to go on the missed out and postponed consults. And we're talking about that. We're going to take questions on your aspects of missed out and postponed consults. And that's where I like to give you a small example. That example may not exist on the slides. And therefore, be all years that somebody had bleeding in 2018 19 bleeding in urine and this bleeding in urine was seen on one or two occasions and then the bleeding stopped because he was taking aspirin or ecosprin he stopped the medic medication for a few days the bleeding stopped there was no burning no pain no discomfort once the bleeding got cleared he felt comfortable he saw his general practitioner he saw the urologist they asked for investigations and because there was nothing wrong happening around a sonography was done it did not pick up much and that was the end of the story because the bleeding never came back. The aspirin was restarted and the patient continued to do well. In the pandemic and the height of pandemic, the, the pandemic too, the patient bled again. And this time the bleeding was massive. And this was probably one and a half years later. He again stopped the ecosprint. He had nowhere to go. The hospitals were closed. There were a few hospitals open. And we used to run our patients till three o'clock in the afternoon. I remember 2.45, he comes in wearing double mask and we are also obviously mask and glove. And he says, I'm bleeding. I said, I need to see a urine sample. He smartly had carried a urine sample in a brown colored bottle, but there were a lot of thick stuff inside. There were clots. So I understood that we have met our match. He said, I've stopped my eco sprint today morning. I said, we need to do an office ultrasound. We just went to the side room, did ultrasound, and there were so much clots. We said, we need to evacuate the clots because you also are partly in retention, which was a part of the gradual happening, which he had postponed completely. We did a cystoscopy and found that there was a growth in the bladder which probably may have grown over the last one and a half years, which sadly was actually occupied by pandemic and obviously, which brought to light only by ecosprin. So ecosprin does not cause bleeding. The bleeding happened in the light of ecosprin or aspirin because the growth had actually overwhelmed the blood supply. So what does the motto say? The motto say that no hematuria or no bleeding in urine should be left alone. 
it should be taken to a logical conclusion where we find the cause of it. Obviously, there are reasons that we get defeated in microscopic hematuria, where the urine routine can sometimes show microscopic hematuria, and we look at bouncing between me and a nephrologist and looking at whether there's a neumorphic RBCs or a dysmorphic RBCs, whether it's a urological cause or a nephrological cause. Many a times, the history is important. But somebody can be having a phimosis, somebody can be having a past history of a stricture or a stone disease, or could be having a catheter or could be having a stent in C2, which can cause microscopic hematuria. So friends, history matters. And you as doctors from morning till evening take history of patients and therefore go to the immediate and the delayed presentations and pick it up. We have miles to go in 2022 because we request our patients to show up to their doctors on the day of complaint rather than postponing it. Now, in the era of health checkup, we also know that we get incidental findings, and we'll talk about that. So the incidental findings are also equally important for us to look into and probably help our doctors to find out. For example, incidental stone in the kidney, number one. Incidental prostatic enlargement to close to 70 grams or 120 grams, and I have no complaints, doctor. So these are stuff that we could talk on as missed out consults, and then there are something which is called as postponed consults. The postponed consult was which you have taken it to a logical conclusion when the times were good and times were sailing rather than times transiting and he getting into trouble. So what got us here, they'll never get us there if we probably postpone something is the motto for today. Let's move on. What describes the quality of life diseases in India? Remember their high prevalence. If I talk about urinary infection, all doctors in, the, in this audience and all uh, colleagues would know that urinary infection is not something unheard and unknown. It's not a rare disease. It causes significant impact in the quality of life. You have to break free from everything, go and see a doctor, give a urine sample, which should be a proper midstream and a clean cat specimen. And after having done that, the doctor will start you on medication to give you symptomatic relief and to bring about a cure in your body. While all that is happening, let's not forget that urinary tract infections and urinary incontinence are actually underreported. They're not reported so frankly. People continue to take medications, they take other kinds of medications, and therefore the patients will be underdiagnosed. They'll be understudied by the doctors and by the medical fraternity. Unfortunately, undertreated, and they suddenly could boomerang into an immediate presentation or an emergency. And therefore, it goes unnoticed. Not that we in India are going through it. Worldwide, the prevalence on quality of life diseases is the same. That percentage of population, for example, 18 to 43 percent of Indian population has some degree of urinary incontinence. What does it mean? They would leak urine at some point in time. It could be urgency, it could be frequency, it could be urge incontinence, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But not everybody would go and see a doctor, a family physician, or a urologist. So you have postponed a urological consult. You have not missed it out. So if you're under-reporting, under, therefore you're under-diagnosing, under-study, you're probably under-treated till you create an emergency until the organs actually go wrong. So for the quality of life diseases, which more commonly in my parlance is erectile dysfunction, where men postpone till it's too late, incontinence of urine, where people start even converting themselves from urgency to urge incontinence and wear diapers, where people have got infections, which are sometimes only burning sensation and some discomfort, and some popping in of tablets and probably not logically concluding it with the proper sterile cultures would probably land up with an ascending UTI in pyelonephritis and get admitted at unearthly hours and midnight hours in the emergency departments too in ICU. So quality of life diseases of infections, of incontinence, of erectile dysfunction, and many more stuff of that kind needs to be looked into. We'll get into that. We are looking at a clinician today in this audience in 2022. There's a growing demand there's a growing demand of more and more patients coming late. Therefore, the diseases sometimes be more complex. A complexity did not come on day one of a disease. For example, a stone which is as big as, as this, which is making a sound of approximately 1.8 centimeters, which we removed by a PCNL, possibly did not become 1.8 or 2 centimeters on day one. It gradually grew and probably became more complex. So if you see a complex kind of a cyst, it probably had a past. If you see a complex kind of a stone or a complex kind of a architecture of an organ, it probably has been gradually growing. Either we have missed out, which we never knew because we never were in health checkup, or we were probably watching it happen and we're postponing a concern. The classical example I said is a stone. And the stone actually grew and become bigger and bigger in time. So it makes diagnosis difficult, partly because the patient wants an early and a quick therapy. At the same time, the need for early therapy is by the doctor. He wants to treat you as fast as possible. He wants to take you forward in a proper therapy. And that's where the healthcare segregation comes in around. And therefore, we all hold a complex. Our family physicians and our general practitioners are such a wonderful kind of team who help us out at all times at midnight hours when they pick up a urological patient. 
they have been sending the patients to our clinician colleagues and specialists in the city on various on various disease processes and various fraternities and therefore as colleagues we land up doing complex surgeries balancing teams balancing diseases trying to be an excellent human and send patients back home safe to back to your general practitioner so we're thinking out of the box as clinicians morning till evening we're looking at how to sort it out and therefore today's clinicians looks into diseases which are very common friends these are common diseases there's a rare disease day which we celebrate on the last day of february every year you can look at what are the rare diseases i wish and pray nobody gets afflicted but the common diseases are part and parcel of aging purpose aging situations and things which happen around incontinence is what i was talking about not a rare disease but i told you 18 to 43% of door to door survey in the country showed people have got incontinence women more than men elderly more than youngsters people wear diapers people stop drinking water they land up with utis and with concentrated urines so they live a quality of life which could be much inferior compared to what they would had they taken a proper urological consult and not postponed a common disease so it's not a rare disease that we're talking about talking about common diseases being done properly and held properly so that we don't get very uncommon presentations of common diseases or complex issues of common diseases therefore as changes happen the man as a patient and the man as a doctor the machine has ultrasound machines and robots and laparoscopic things and are, and the medicines that are available which sometimes are required as a smaller dosage or a full dose and the motivation that you and i have not to miss out a consult is all that is required today and that's what we aiming for today to be enthusing our colleagues that the pandemic has gone our diseases which were probably postponed have to be taken rightly and in time we let we talk on those small issues on the health journey that people have in other words magic is something you make by reaching your doctor in time magic is what my family physicians and my general practitioner colleagues in the city and the country do because we always know that our health becomes very very important uh, and most valuable when we lose it for example you are postponing something and you suddenly land up in a trouble which you don't want to that become can become too late friends we are looking at those kind of disease aspects around in safeguarding health in 2022 because everybody has a role and everybody has a stage and when we become partners across the table as a doctor and a patient we look at true partnership and probably solving the puzzle and treating the patient in time in other words our understanding of urological health is very fast changing we just had the conference in america and then we will have one in europe and then we'll have one in india and this goes on where we look at our evidence our understanding our subject and our guidelines and principles and working best practical guidelines changing dramatically if all that is happening please help your clinicians help your urologists to be utilizing the best of the efforts that they continue to do like the one i did for the last 11 and a half 12 hours in the hospital by changing the goal post as we understand more and more in other words the evolution of the subject has dramatically changed because we can nip in the bud and treat things in time the evidence is getting solid on what i will do for a very small stone of 4 5 6 mm millimeters what i'll do for a 10 mm stone and what i'll do for a stag horn stone those evidence are very much available based on our expertise and our experience to match the expectations of our colleagues in the society and therefore it is important to improve the quality of life as we understand more and we change the quality of life friends we are talking about only not postponing the diseases of kidneys the ureters the urinary bladder the urethra the prostate and the external genitalia and all that quality of life issues with men and women have that's all we are talking about in other words we are talking about these organs which are deep seated the urology is an amazing subject majority of the organs are inside the body and the external genitalia happens outside the body as a urologist we deal with the genital urinary system and diseases of the genitalia which includes your external urinary meters your uh, genital system the urinary system the testes and the perineum and all those aspects are still dealt, dealt very strongly by urologist who would examine you look at the evidence by the investigation he wants and he helps it to be sorted out summer season is still strongly on we're waiting for the monsoon and don't forget we pick up more and more stones i'll come to that in details but a stone has a natural history of falling down if it's small if it's too big like the one i showed you i pluck it from the kidney and if you have a stone in the kidney the only two natural histories it will grow or it will fall down and both of them are detrimental to health because that will not happen in a very planned 9 o'clock in the morning it can happen at odd times odd hours and therefore all stones in the kidney which are picked up on health checkup which are picked up on patients who are stone formers should not be postponed let's talk about that once a stone former always a stone former so if you had a stone 2 years and 10 years and 20 years ago please don't forget you have a stone sitting in the kidney right now you and i would be lucky because 50% of population have got stones today 
will have in 10 years time another stone forming in the left kidney or the right kidney. And therefore, it's important for us not to wake up to it when we have hematuria, when we have pain, when we have colic at odd times and odd hours. Let's pick up something which I will talk about is a kind of paradigm shift in stones. Let's talk about another organ which is deep-seated in quality of life issue, which is postponed so much on a balance that we maintain. You and I are listening into this monologue for a while while I'm waiting for questions to be put forward to me. The balance of the bladder is great. The bladder relaxes and contracts, relaxes and contracts, obviously in a timed manner with a very slow mechanism, like the slow one, compared to the fast pace, 72 times per minute with the heart does. The heart contracts and relaxes dramatically very fast and maintains the entire visceral go of the blood supply going to each organ and maintains it. Whereas the bladder is a receptive organ and receives all the waste products in the liquid form, which comes and the bladder stores. And only at an opportune time, which you find convenient, you would unzip yourself and empty your blood. Something can go wrong completely on two aspects in the normal physiology of the maturation cycle. The continence can go wrong. That means the control mechanism can go wrong. And I told to you that close to half the population across the world and more so in the country have got some degree of incontinence, which means they've got some increased frequency, they've got some urgency, they've got some urge incontinence, and this could be troublesome to many individuals. And therefore, when the continence mechanism or when the balloon called the urinary bladder, not the gall bladder, the urinary bladder fills up and you get sensations that you need to go, you go and empty your bladder where the bladder contracts, passage open, the urine comes out. If this mechanism has gone wrong and you can't control urine, things are changing dramatically for you and me. And hope, let's not forget people who suffer from urinary incontinence or urinary leakage or urinary issues which are uncontrollable could be children, could be men, could be women, could be elderly, and could be neurogenic bladders. That's a sad story where the bladder can turn neurogenic and out of your and my control. And this results from neurological diseases of spinal injuries, brain injuries, brain issues. So all these are neurogenic cases. This could be childhood issues. It could be adult issues, it could be a new onset issue, or it could be from a road traffic accident, from a trauma, or from a kind of a tumor in the spine of the brain. So incontinence or leakage of urine can be suffered by everybody. And I must touch base here that children can have bed wetting. For the first three, five years, mothers take an immense amount of charge on, on training the, the bladder kind of thing, giving them an idea as to when to go. But what happens about the nighttime urination, which is called as bedwetting at night or any essence of bedwetting? And that's something we need to be aware of. We need to make our colleagues in the society be enthused about that. Six to 15 years is a very important age group. That's a time where various milestones are being developed. A child should be developing those milestones in the wake time and also in the sleep time. And that's probably going to happen only when you and I look at bedwetting as an important aspect. Unfortunately, I see children bedwetting since their birth and the parents still they remember. And they've been bedwetting at the age of 12 years, 15 years, 20 years, also at 25 years when they're going to get married or at the age of 18 years when they want to leave home and want to go and live in a hostel where they're scared to. It's their quality of life disease which has brought them to a point where they don't want to get married because at the age of 25, they are primary nocturnal illnesses or at the age of 18, when they have bedwetting at their home, how can they go to a hostel and bedwet? So the quality of life issues, it's a missed out consult, unfortunately, by our parents who probably did not look into when we were children. So all parents who have got children between 6 to 15 years and have bedwetting children need to see a urologist, a pediatrician, or a colleague who looks into this. Uh, that I run a bedwetting clinic, that I run a nocturia and bedwetting clinic for the last five and a half years on the kind of aspects we started. We look at bedwetting children coming in from all across. They've been bedwetting, they've been treated. They probably have failed because bedwetting treatment requires two things. A behavioral therapy by the family, which includes the parents, the alarm therapy, and the kind of medications we choose without side effects. So somewhere a misconsult and a child grows, continues to bedwet. It's a sad story. We need to look into that. Men and women can have this new onset phenomena at age of 20s, 40s, 60s, and 80s. And that is an important aspect of quality of life. I was talking about the maturation cycle or the cycle where you store urine and you empty urine. Store urine and you empty urine. That you can't store urine, you have got urgency frequency and urge incontinence as overactive bladder. If you can't empty urine, you have got an obstruction to the flow of urine. And both of them, which are normal physiological processes, can go completely wrong and you will be in trouble. And therefore, it's important for us to wake up to a phenomenon where we are able to not miss out our trouble and therefore not miss out a urological concern and obviously, we should not postpone a urological consult where we are either bedwetting or having urgency frequency, and we need to meet our doctors in time. So, missed out consult happens in, in incontinence quite frequently. The missed out consults also happen in the emptying phase where there's a gradual progressive obstruction to the flow of urine. It could happen to elderly women, 
who are getting postmenopause. It could be happening to young men who have a stricture urethra, or it could be happening to our gracefully aging population from 50s to 80s, where prostate, though enlarging or not enlarging, is attempting to occlude the urinary passage by various kinds of growth. So the bladder sensations are important, which you have. When the bladder fills up, don't postpone urination. And why? I'll come to that in another very important aspect where we look at diabetes and diabetes related changes happening in the urinary bladder. Friends, overactive bladder, which I talked about, is a sadly postponed issue. People try everything and they finally actually come back and say that nothing has worked. I'm still wearing diapers. Or my progression has happened on an issue where there was only frequency in the day. Now it is at night. Where there was only frequency. Now I have gross urgency. And there was only frequency urgency. Now I have even incontinence of urine. I'm wearing a diapers. So this spectrum can progress if the bladder is not checked. And that check is something which is important. It translates as an overactive bladder phenomena into frequency of urination, sudden urge, involuntary leakage, and getting up multiple times at night. And somebody suffering from one or all, doesn't he have a significant impact in quality of life? And he could be as good a gentleman or a lady in the audience at this point of time, working in a bank or working in a society or working probably as a driver or working probably as a pilot. These kind of individuals are having great amount of anxiety and expectations from the medical community as the urological colleagues who actually take this subject forward to relieve them of the agony that they go through. So friends, a very strong missed out consult, which I continue waking up people across on the YouTube channel, I continue to speak on is overactive bladder. That means you've got an urgency and a sudden complaint desire to avoid and you're going on a holiday rather than going and seeing your doctor in time. You've got an urge incontinence, live on diapers, with precipitancy and still continue to live on diapers and smell of urine, or you pass urine eight to 12 times in the daytime, once to three times at night, it is actually hampering your urinary quality of life. If that is what is happening, see your doctor. A doctor could be anybody who deals with the subject and see your urologist on a urological consult and get it sorted. So doctors look into this, take a history, look at your symptom scoring, and then look at the bothersomeness that they could have in terms of obstruction or no obstruction and treat you with the right therapy. The therapy could be a lot of behavioral therapy in overactive bladder and incontinence. A lot of therapies which doctors take up medically or surgically as required. Let's move forward and look at that. These patients are visiting urinary situations more frequently and living a disabling condition where the impact on them, on the careers, on the families has got a huge amount. I said 9 to 43% of Indian population, women more than men, all ages and wide variety of severity as much as that they are refractory to medical treatment and then they probably see other doctors where because this medicine has not worked, a combination medicine has not worked, where we from a Euroflow climb to Eurodynamics and treat people around. So the prevalence of these kind of issues is common. For example, a publication 20 years ago talked that 53% of Asian women have symptoms of overactive bladder, but only 21% people seek treatment. Majority of them have got urgency, which is a compelling desire and a kind of trauma. Many of them have got frequency and incontinence, but we got to look into how to help them out. And this is where a quality of life impact will be improved dramatically if you don't miss out this consult and don't postpone this consult by just wearing diapers and waiting for this to happen. I said, lack of bladder control brings about a massive amount of issues to an individual who suffers with physical, psychological, social, sexual, financial, occupational. They have to leave a job sometimes because they probably will not get a toilet close to their working place. And there are women who actually say that we don't want to go so often because we would leak urine before we reach a departmental store or reach a toilet and I want to leave the store. And these are for very young women whose faces are just kept out of brevity. And looking at a 27 years young girl or somebody as elderly as 67 years lady who says that these are very bothersome problems. I leak urine and I want to probably look at how do I enthuse myself to be looking at seeing a doctor. She actually doesn't take a bus because she cannot ask the bus driver to stop. She wears black pants. But all this is adjustment to life. So why adjust to life? Why miss out a consult when you actually can get a urological consult with a kind of revolution on man, machine, and medicines has happened? Your motivation can kill the cat. It actually can help us treat you much earlier than you postponed your therapy and lived a life of expectations around. So to me, the pathophysiology of this inappropriate involuntary detrusor contraction where women leak urine, they go to gynecologists and they get treated. Why postpone urination? Uh, men and women leak urine, they go to the family physicians, they see the right kind of doctors and they get treated. Many of them who probably have refractory and progressive kind of urinary complaints do come to us, are referred by our colleagues and we look at are they refractory, are they de novo, quite gross. We study them with activities on ultrasound, on urophilometry, on various kinds of pattern and symptom scores and probably treat them. 
So friends, overactive bladder is not to be postponed. It's to be treated. If you have urgency frequency and it's just plaguing you towards travel in this wonderful city, probably go and see your urologist. Because the OAB today will only worsen with passing time. If I'm 51 today, I'll become 53 and 57 soon. My black hairs will turn gray. My disease process may only progress because prevalence increases with age. Men and women both. Obviously, if you get elderly, your overactive bladder only worsens with passing time. And that's the time many overactive bladder elderly people have friends like arthritis, like Parkinsonism, like age-related changes, loss of confidence, and we don't want to let them, let them go through that trauma at all. So very important for us to have your questions on that kind of a postponement. A clinician or a doctor, as I said, who lives the real times of complex diseases and postponed presentations, looks into the work, into the guidelines, which I talked about, which is being always added upon by evidence. He looks at urine routine and culture. He tells you to give a proper midstream urine specimen, looks at the post war residue, takes the question as, goes up the ladder, treats you on one side, evaluates your other side, and finally makes you from a complicated to an uncomplicated and treats you fully. So, in other words, having an idea about overactive bladder is important because this is quite a common disease. In the pandemic, this was the most prevalent kind of a telemedicine consult I used to do. And I still see overactive bladder at all ages. So it means they have got urgency frequency. So, so their goals is what as a clinician I need to match. I need to eliminate this urge incontinence. I need to decrease the urgency and frequency episodes so that they can work and live in peace. I need to also ensure treatment compliance on both the behavioral therapy and the medical therapy that we give. It is not about fever. It's not about fever that when you take paracetamol, fever goes away and you stop it. It is about improving the bladder's health, making it happen till the doctor wants you to do it and therefore the right medicines for the right patient. In other words, as a doctor, as a urologist, we all look at from this city and from this country, meeting the expectations on patients uh, with our colleagues in general practice to take this forward to the level where we match the expectations. So friends, your living continence is treatable and is curable and very important to look at normal bladder and overactive bladder. Many of us do have this issue around where we leak urine at odd times and odd locations. So why miss a consult if you have incontinence of urine? And this is important that we don't miss out a stress incontinence kind of talk. It is important because Women gracefully age, the pelvic floor changes dramatically. Men don't develop this important entity called stress incontinence, not a stress of the mind, but a stress which happens on the abdominal aspect. As a result of it, the pelvic floors undergo the stress. And this stress can happen exclusively only in women as young as 20s, 30s to as elderly as 60s to 80s. What happens to them is all about leakage of urine with minimal stress to the abdomen. Which When does it happen? On walking, running, jumping bending, walking up the stairs, doing a namaz, laughing, even laughing. So if you laugh loudly, you could have some amount of pressure on the tummy and that gets transmitted onto the pelvic floor. Don't forget, women have their pelvic floor changing and everlasting. In other words, during the parturition, during pregnancy, the pelvic floor undergoes a stretch of all the muscles. Many women post-pregnancy can have leakage of urine which is called stress incontinence. Let us keep it as temporary as possible by all our gynecology colleagues helping them out, which they do with various kinds of physiotherapies in time once they want to recoil and get recoup their body back to normal. It sometimes gets missed out and many women live with incontinence, incapacitating them when they walk, when they run, when they jump and when they laugh. And this kind of incontinence is sadly common to women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. More and more postmenopausal women lose their hormones, have a weakness in the pelvic floor, and they live, unfortunately, with diapers. Or when I ask a question across the table, they say that, yes, I leak urine. But Dr. Pandey, nobody asked me this question before. So as doctors, we could be guilty if we don't ask a woman who's having a UTI, who's having a rashes in the entrotus, who's having a urgency, urge incontinence, or has got urinary issues or gynecological issues that does she have a stress incontinence? And she would say, yes, for the last two to 10 years, I have stress incontinence. I wear a diaper when I go out. I'm wearing diapers now. So youngsters to elderly, do we allow them to suffer? Men don't suffer from this till they develop an incontinence as a result of a prostate surgery. I land up treating a lot of male incontinence when men come from far and, and uh, distant, undergone robotic prostate removal and still leaking urine, underwent a prostate surgery in emergency in different cities and they're leaking urine completely on diapers. So men undergo, undergo treatment on stress incontinence too, more by iatrogenic or sphincteric injuries, etc. But women have sadly this as a part of their bodies, graceful aging, and therefore we need to counsel our women folk to prevent them. And I treat this regularly by doing the kind of stuff 
where a missed consult or a delayed consult or a postponed consult is treated in 24 to 48 hours. A woman comes, we evaluate her, we do urodynamics, we examine her, look at the incontinence and the agony that she goes through. We do those important aspects of surgery where her self-esteem, her lifestyle, her strained relationship and her embarrassment goes away. We give her laughter, the best medicine, by a small surgery. It's a surgery through the vagina where we either put an autologous tape or a tension-free vaginal tape. Or recently, we did some pubovaginal slings on women who are totally incontinent or incontinent from the sphincters. So women are treatable on the overactive bladder, as such everybody, and women who go through stress incontinence are treatable. In the months that, that happened recently, that we put some of advertorials and lectures and talks on the, on the magazine called The Week, few weeks ago, many women did connect and probably contact. So unless you wake them up and shake them up, sometimes in the in the busy walk of life, a lot of individuals with quality of life issues of incontinence, if it could postpone this completely. And urinary incontinence itself is a muscle in many And female urinary incontinence is completely missed out in the society. It's missed out by me and by everybody. And it's important for us to wake up. And that's one reason why I continue to speak on the YouTube and make them wake up that incontinence is not your, your cup of your tea. You got to leave this and get it sorted out completely. So it's important for us to break the silence, break the menace and repeat it completely. Friends, I did talk about bedwetting that we run, a Nocturia bedwetting clinic. A silent and unmet need is important when you have multiple times getting up at night and passing urine, which happens more in diabetic and elderly people and in prostatism. If you have anything of that kind, meet your doctors in your cities and get it sorted out. If somebody is having bedwetting as an elderly patient or somebody youngster or the pediatric age group from 6 to 15 where you can mold it, where you can make the milestones happen a lot by therapy, behavioral alarm and things. We should look at, we should not spend our nights looking at impossibles at who will help me out. It is treatable completely in neurological parlance. I remember we talked about nocturia and bedwetting treatable completely and it's treatable. So nocturia are getting up multiple times at night and bedwetting are treatable completely. And Prostate health is postponed and missed out. And let's talk about this. When we do an ultrasound and find a prostatic enlargement, we probably see a urologist, our colleagues, and then a urologist would examine, evaluate you. But he will look at what have you missed? Have you missed an age-related change? Have you missed out an obstruction to the flow of urine? Which can be seen that the passage is gradually narrowing down through the prostate. And this is something which is a very gradual, progressive change happening over decades and something which you need to tell our patients. So friends, your questions are important on this aspect where prostate health can be missed out. It is missed out sadly because prostate is gradually changing. It's changing as gradual as the year changes day by day till it, uh, one full year ends on one night, which is the 31st night of the January, from December, sorry. So on 31st December of whole year changes, but it has been happening slowly from 1st January till 31st of December. Similarly, the prostate undergoes a very gradual change and that change is what we need to enthuse our people from the 50s to 80s. That's what I continue talking again and looking at, let us not miss out on changes in the prostate. So when you do a health checkup and you find a prostatic enlargement, you come over saying that this is changing, but let me ask you a question across the table. Is it causing occlusion to the urinary passage? Are you obstructed in the flow? Is the urinary flow poor? And that helps out. So in other words, the urinary flow can gradually change because the prostate health is changing and a great flow which is going across the wall where you can paint on the wall is changing. The flow becomes a dribble, narrow, forced, push out, and still don't empty the urine. And therefore, a doctor or urologist will look at your history, examine you clinically, and do a digital rectal examination. Do a urine routine and not see RBCs or pus cells and obstruction. Look at a uroflometry which defines the kind of flow you have. And therefore, only look at advanced as and when required. The, the bottom line are evaluate, investigate, and thoroughly treat you. Let, let, look at that prostate which is enlarging inside the bladder. The job of the prostate is to stay below the bladder and occlude if there's a change of hormones. But the prostate can grow in all directions. There's no permission required. And this prostate, you can see, has grown like a kutub minar in, inside the bladder. And this is probably not a postponed consult because the patient didn't know about it. This is a missed out consult because had we done a health checkup, we could have seen this happening every six monthly, every yearly. We could have done multiple things of evaluating this in terms of a uroflow metric. So medial lobe prostate even cannot be examined by my finger and something which we need to look into. So, hence, obstruction to the flow of urine happens. Hesitancy or difficulty in starting urine, the force and the caliber of urine gradually going down, incomplete urination, straining to pass urine, and post war dribble, all of which was never there. And if it's walking into our lives, we go to see the urological doctor and probably look at and probably get sorted out. That's important. So, obstruction to the flow of urine is sadly postponed till you actually interview across the table and ask, 
And I tell you, it takes time to start, doctor. It is a very poor stream. It takes time to empty. We don't empty it completely. We strain every time and the bladder doesn't empty completely. We dribble a lot. And finally, it's all about the obstruction that I'm suffering. It's a wake-up call after the lecture that happened to me. In other words, when this is happening, the bladder cannot empty and the bladder is being irritated. We call it as storage symptoms or irritative symptoms. Increased frequency because the bladder is contained erratic erratically. Urgency to the flow of urine, urge incontinence, intermittency, nocturia, and burning sensation or infection. All of these do matter. And therefore, it is important for us to wake up to a urologist who would do a uroflometry. I call it as an ECG of the bladder. I would ask you to do a flow. We pick up things and we take it forward. So, missed out consult here or a postponed consult was, I was having trouble with urinary issues, but I postponed because I thought this could be probably changing in its own. Whereas this progressed over the last six months to two years. Very important for us. Look at the uroflometry I was talking about, which I do discuss at times. A flow which is great, gradual, and probably a bell-shaped curve. When you empty your bladder to near completion like 10 ml, which is pointed out here as a residual volume, is a great flow. And that is what I aim and pray for everybody. But that may not happen. So if your flow is poor, a urologist would ask you to do a uroflometry. He sees the flow patterns and deduces lots and maybe asks you more questions, which gives us an idea that we need to pick up things. If that is a great flow, imagine somebody has a poor flow. A flow which on a green line, which you see, is a very, very sad flow when the flow is gradually not happening as the way it was happening to be done. So you can see that this flow is very, very narrow and passing very, very slowly. At the end of it, the bladder is not empty completely. If you look at this obstruction to the flow, you see that in both the average flow rate as well as on the peak flow rate, the patient doesn't pass the exam. Let's look at somebody just here. The flow is so nice where a bell-shaped curve comes over and the flow under the graph is awesome. The bladder is empty completely and he says, I have no complaints. And you can see that he is passing the exam on average, but he is obviously scoring the gold when it comes to when it comes to here. But flow is improving. And let me tell you that from 45, 50s, 60s, everybody's flow is gradually going down. Men, women, women more so postmenopausal changes in the bladder, changes in the urethra. Women so much changes in the prostate by occlusion, which you pick up by your own complaints or by the sonologist who does a sonography. So basically, we do a urodynamics to identify that there is an obstruction to the flow of urine or there's a weakness to the flow of urine. That's where I would like to dwell upon and talk that obstruction to the flow of urine can also happen in men and women because of stricture urethra. The urine flow is very thin and narrow. It was related to some trauma, some injury, some catheterization, some road traffic accident, and the urinary passage is very narrowed down. You can see that that is a normal urinary passage. You can suddenly see that this area has become so narrow and a strict urethra, which means I need to do a buccal mucosal graft urethroplasty later. But the first step is to relieve him of urinary issues, which he is obstructed of. And therefore, retention of urine, which has been happening for a long time, gradually one day would let us put a suprapubic cystostomy because no catheter will go through it. So this is very important for us to look at. Doing a urethroplasty for a patient who had a stricture urethra since childhood by a trivial penile injury and what has happened. Compared to somebody who had a short segment stricture, look at between the red lines, is a segment which is very short and has been dilated over years. It did not work still. And finally, underwent an astomotic urethroplasty, removing that part of the obstruction. Now, this is what I was talking to. And let me, let me dwell on this before we take your questions. Small kidney stones. You do a sonography, you look at some small stones, and you want to do a sonography again after six months or one year because you want to see the change in the size. For God's sake, there are only two things which can happen to these stones. The white things which you see here are all stones on the left kidney. That's a right kidney where the stone is already blocking and creating an emergency to the kidney pipe. In other words, the kidney pipe starts from here. It's actually been blocked on a stone, which I am showing you again here. In other words, it became an emergency. On the left side, or on the side which I am pointing to you now, you can see very small, small stones sitting. A small stone sitting there, I said there are two naturalistics. Either they will fall down or they will obstruct. Look at somebody who has on the left kidney got only two stones left is my right and how it is you're sitting in front of me. Therefore, you have got the two stones sitting there which are very small. The stones will only grow bigger with passing time because there's a metabolic change happening in right? and we need to look at. So this kind of a stone will gradually grow and become bigger and that's why initially what we used to do for sailors and for air hostesses and for pilots has changed completely and now we don't let this happen anymore. We go to the kidneys and remove the stones 
before the stones could travel and cause midnight emergency, falling, dropping, blocking, causing fever and bleeding. And that is called as RIRS or flexible urotroscopy. So if you don't want to miss out a consult and we don't want to postpone a consult on stones, which gradually grow, like you see that on all the poles, you've got one stone here, you've got one stone here, you've got one stone on the right lower pole, and similarly, you've got upper pole stones on this side. So what are we dealing with? We're dealing with patient who could be five times in emergency because they've got five stones and many more microliths. So in other words, we should not let this happen around. So either grow or to become big, and many of them could be trouble is what we need to prevent. By doing a preventive surgery or a prophylactic surgery, let's talk on that. So the geography of calyx is looked at. The telescopes go and bend inside each, each and every calyx, go and pick up stones, later and powder and remove it. Friends, questions on this is important because we are not letting stone cause a trouble. The stone got caught because it was silent as a result of sonography or a result of a urological concern, which you did. And we pick up and probably go inside in the kidney and powder the stones with laser, the blue fiber, and everything is powdered and removed. In other words, you are cured at that point in time and you will work hard to prevent the stone for the future. That is how it is. So the stones get powdered just to show you some films. And then we're powdering the stones with laser and then we go in and clear the stones completely. So on the right, you can see the laser powdering the stone inside the kidney. So we're inside the kidney. We're not letting it come and block the ureter and cause trouble. So in today's modern era of 2022, in the last five, seven years, yeah, the flexible urotroscopy has helped us out completely. And therefore, RIRS today, let's concede, is expanding indications. More and more patients are agreeing for this kind of a prophylactic surgery where a stone has been picked up incidental on a health checkup or picked up as a restone formation. We get a stone-free rates where the powders are left behind and all the stones are brought about. In other words, from seafaring and airfaring industry, we're using it for common people. So if somebody has a four, five, seven, eight millimeter stone in the kidney, rather than sitting on it and only doing a lithotripsy many a times, so a stone may not come out and block. It is important for us to look at that we don't want complications in the ureter. We want the stone to be removed before the stone can get trouble to us. And therefore, RIRS, or retrograde interrenal surgery by a flexible urotroscope which can bend, has actually taken up the whole urological circle by a completely a storm. We don't want the ureters being choked and there could be fever, vomiting, and sometimes it can be missed out. And therefore, I must thank you for various aspects of urology in the last 22 years plus that I have been filling colors off by bringing about a care to a cure with the help of my colleagues who are someday patients and someday ambassadors in the society and our colleague doctors who have been picking up these much in time. So while I look at coming to a close at some point in time, I'm only saluting all of you to looking at there is a campaign for everything. There's a campaign for not missing out a urological consent. There's a campaign for infusing my colleagues in different fraternities. For example, there's a lady who says, as I got older, my incontinence became worse. I'm so glad I did something about it and saw a urologist. Now I can enjoy my life. But I say that a urologist may not be able to take care of everybody. So the campaign for incontinence goes to each and every doctor. If somebody is incontinence, evaluate, treat, and probably see the urologist. I do that Monday to Saturday. I look at looking up incontinence in child, bedwetting, elderly, geriatric, and somebody very needy in terms of stress incontinence or overactive bladder or refractory incontinence where we inject Botox and probably silence the bladder. So it's time to take for a clinician or for a, a, an individual in the society not to miss it out. Gynecologists see more than me and therefore they take charge these days and actually take the campaign of incontinence much stronger. Failures are stepping stones to success. Missed out consult and postponed consults are not acceptable. If you always do what we have always done, we'll always get what we've always got. A delayed and a late presentation and more amount of time required, more complex, and many doctors may not be able to complete it. So, as I said in the beginning of it, real times 2022 are on. We need to look at while we come to a close in the next few minutes and answer your questions. We are very interested in waking up our society, let's not miss out your logical consult. Be it in a small village, be in the very heart of Mumbai in Andheri, or in Malar or Borivili or Kandeviri or D, Moisar and Valsar and the South Bombay. We're looking at not missing out consults in any of the diseases, any of the fraternities. But your logical consults get missed because if it is bleeding has stopped, if the pain has stopped, then we probably even don't go and see our physician doctors and our urologists. By the time we come, the stone has blocked the ureter for a long time. Let's talk about something like diabetes. While you look at diabetes with everyday blood sugar levels, I look at diabetes as an amazing disease. It progressively leads to many organs as an end-state disease. For example, like the eyes undergo a diabetic retinopathy and your eyes, unfortunately, will miss out the beautiful sceneries that you wanted to see in old age. 
because 10 to 20 years of diabetes can bring about those changes of retinopathy. Similarly, the kidneys which function very well, unfortunately with diabetes, poor control or long-standing diabetes can bring about changes and the kidneys undergo failure. The commonest cause of kidney failures in the world is both diabetes and hypertension and this can actually trouble a lot of people around. Therefore, if you are a diabetic, if you are a hypertensive, take charge. Take charge completely. See your doctor, see yourself. Take charge today for better tomorrows, which is what is important. Now, diabetes brings about changes in the bladder, which I want to wake everybody to, is diabetes and urinary bladder have got a connection. If diabetes is more than 10 years time, even if controlled very well, it brings about changes in the bladder, which is called as diabetic cystopathy. The actin myosin fibers of these muscle contracting is actually taken up by elastin fibers and by more fibrosis. And sometimes the sensation goes away because of peripheral neuropathy and peripheral angiopathy. So diabetes brings about all that. And therefore, men suffer from erectile dysfunction, which are refractory and acquired penile processes on one side. On the other side, diabetics, elderly people have long-standing diabetes of 10, 20, 30 years, have got a weaker bladder with the sensations weak, weak internally and contraction power of the bladder being weak. If that is what is happening, they could be in trouble and there could be somebody who need to be looked into. Friends, we are on the 52nd minute of a missed out and a postponed urological consult. And I don't want to, anybody to miss out on postponement of consult where you are bleeding in urine go to a logical conclusion. Where you have a urinary tract infection, go to a logical conclusion unless conclusion will be a prophylactic antibiotic or a probiotic because somebody is very young and has no obstruction to the flow of urine and because of female sex with vaginal and rectal bacteria getting infected more so, we look at prophylaxis. Kind of thing. But an elderly woman getting recurrent UTI is because of postmenopausal state. Elderly woman getting incontinence of urine which is stress incontinence over active bladder is age-related changes happening in pelvic floor or in the bladder. People getting diabetic cystopathy and a weak bladder, which does not contract, does not help our prostate therapies completely. And therefore, everybody who is a diabetic and elderly and who doesn't empty the bladder and have a, an ultrasound showing a high residual urine will have to probably go and see a urologist or a doctor. Therefore, let's not miss out our urological condition. So incontinence of urine is truly a jigsaw puzzle because we postpone. Similarly, missed out urological consult or postponed urological consult is a completely jigsaw puzzle. Let's not do that. We are on threshold of solving our missed out consult and, and postponed consults because remember, early identification for your doctor is the truth of the moment. He will then go deep into it because when you identify, it's not the day the disease started. Probably you bled on that day, you had obstruction on that day, but you could be having a long-standing issue. That issue probably was missed out or postponed by you till a doctor picks up on the day he needs to pick up. For example, I talk about the good news issue today and every day when we look at awareness. I pick up on digital rectal exam or on a PSA examination or an MRI or a PET scan, cancer prostates which are treated robotically so regularly. But on the other side, I want to look at more and more people identifying themselves. PSA happens to be a slippery slope on one side, but also helps us to identify many early prostate cancers beyond 50. And therefore, beyond 50, if you have got issues, you should do a urophlometry because your urinary flow is not good. If you have incontinence of urine, see your gynecologist, see your physician, see your doctor, see your urologist and get your continence from incontinence. Very important. In other words, the good news issue is I will not postpone my consult if I have got a urological issue of any kind. If I have got an andrological issue, if I have got an issue which is postponed and progressed to a point in time where I find that the, the problems are only worsening with passing time. Hence, it's a teamwork. Like I have a teamwork with my general physician colleagues, with my family physician colleagues and my IMA colleagues around we look at that and we have our, our bonding with our gynecologist and other fraternities with our neurologist who pick up cases early in urinary incontinence in neurological cases. The teamwork happens best when a doctor and a patient combine. So if there is something which is so much impossible for you, don't sit home. Make it possible by reaching your clinician, your urologist, your doctor in your location. In other words, a teamwork will thrive best if you pick it up. We don't miss it out partly by a health checkup, partly by picking up in time, or partly by what Dr. Pandey said, once a stone former, always a stone former. We need to do an ultrasound once in a year and look at an early stone and probably treat it by a lithotripsy, by an RIRS and a flexible urotroscopy before it gives a uretric colic again and I land up at an unearthly R again. Friends, impossible to possible, finally treatable and curable is completely in the hands of a patient and the hands of the society. Yes, we can if you probably combine together and take it. Friends, Next time when you think of prostates for yourself, for your fathers, for your neighbors and for your elderly at home, it could either be a BPH or a cancer prostate. And that cannot be picked up only by Google and Google doctors. It will be picked up by a urological consult where I will do a digital rectal examination. I will do a urophlometry 
and we look at the changes happening as a result of the occlusion and pick up these things early. I'll do a detailed examination, look at a PSA, identify all those things, and a PSA being raised in a background of a UTI will be brought down because that could be prostatitis related stuff. Cancer prostates will be picked up early, and as, as in good news issue, probably treat them and cure them completely. If you think of stones, once a stone former, always a stone former. And look at kidney stones, which can be treated before they cause a havoc or a trouble of ureteric colic or co causing obstruction and loss of kidney. If you have a ureteric stone, kindly don't postpone it to every tomorrow because the stone is not troubling you. And I will see when I come back from a holiday or when I come back from a business meeting. Not true. A ureteric stone is trying to come out but is not able to make any noise. But wherever it is seated, if it's not making a noise of discomfort, pain, fever, and vomiting, it is actually causing an internal trouble in that part of the ureter where it thins out the ureter, causes a ureteric stricture. And if you've got bladder stones, it could either be because of obstruction to the prostate or it could be changes happening around, which could be probably neurogenic bladder. It's important. If you think of incontinence of urine, be it a man, woman, a child, or an elderly, an urgent in Incontinence is medically treatable. A stress incontinence of women where they cough and leak urine is treatable by a very minor surgery to the vagina. By psychovagal fistula or leaking urine to the vagina is treatable as much as incontinence because of interstitial cystitis bladder pain syndrome. If you think about reconstruction, where somebody has got a stricture urethra or a PUG obstruction or a very small capacity bladder or extrophy or a peroneus disease, it can be completely treatable. If you think of urological emergencies of the past, and you're worried about one in terms of you had a trauma or a torsion or you had a bleeding in urine or you had a refractory retention and blockage of urine, don't postpone to another urological emergencies. Take it to a logical conclusion by the doctor in front who wants to treat you and probably to you. Friends, think urology, think about a timely consent. Don't miss out and don't postpone because this could be life-changing, it could be life-changing, it could be life-extending and life-modifying. A treatment which is not only for critically and needy and sick people, but for you and me as common people in the society who have got issues which we sadly postpone. We need to bring back ourselves in these real times, not to be on the crossroads anymore, but into very active and fuller lives. We all are a phone call away as doctors. Maybe not my phone, which stays silent, but we all are a phone call away in terms of treating you at a consult as early as possible rather than a missed or a postponed consult. Friends, we are need to reincarnate ourselves. For many people say, I love my urologist because even if I delayed, he treated it. That's how we continue to work around the clock, helping you out and helping to safeguard your health. Don't postpone health to a point in time when it becomes too late. So friends, I'll take some questions. It was more to look at time that our partnership as doctors in various fraternities, time that our partnership as doctor and patient takes our consult to a front row seat in time. In other words, it's truly a challenge. It's not easy. It's a dream. Because if there's no discomfort, no nothing, why should I go to a doctor? But remember, it's also a story of human ambition where you want to do better. The day a, a disease is picked up, everything goes for a toss. You, your family, your insurance, and obviously your day-to-day -day life. It is important that we reincarnate ourselves completely from where we are. We promise ourselves that we will not miss out a urological consult. If you have a trouble, if you have picked up something which is an incidental stone, a prosthetic enlargement, incontinence of urine, or somebody who is an elderly woman in our homes who has got diapers, We'll reincarnate ourselves and not miss out a consult, which is either a missed out or a postponed consult. Friends, it is important for us to make this challenge completely happening. I need to come to a close because I've been exactly out there helping out, not miss out a consult, which I'm aiming to. Friends, it is important to take some of the questions which could be there. But at the end of it, it was important for me to wake up everybody that missed out urological consult makes it difficult for a, a general practitioner, for a family physician, for a urologist, because the disease doesn't stay static. The stone does not stay one millimeter or a five millimeters. It progresses in size, it falls down, it causes a colic, causes an injury. Similarly, a tumor which was one centimeter, okay, for you postponing, could become one and a half centimeters. A tumor could bleed, it could happen. A prosthetic enlargement is not bothering you today because it's picked up on uh, a probably routine checkup, but it should bother you because prostate has got blood supply which could actually suddenly bleed. It could suddenly bleed when you are constipated and straining to pass away. It could suddenly bleed for people who actually are on ecospin and clopidogrel and that becomes an emergency because larger the prostate, more the blood supply of the prostate. Larger the prostate, not necessarily there's an obstruction. I keep speaking on the YouTube about size does not matter. A small prostate is equally a trouble for me when it occludes compared to a large prostate. So friends, I'll take some questions which are there on the chat box if there are any because I need to look at, it is important for us to look at 
how to help such patients around. So that I don't consult on this kind of aspects around. I only want to look at that these questions which they complain about their quality of life. Why I was talking about kidney, I was talking about urine, I was talking about bladder, and people postpone all this, including incontinence, bleeding in urine, bleeding in the semen. Sometimes they also postpone their sexual function. And there's somebody who says that I've got sexual weakness and lack of desire, and I'm 57, I'm from Saudi Arabia, and please send me your treatment. And that kind of an aspect is always looked at and respected. That kind of a, a treatment which I do for people who are away from Bombay is on online consults that I do. I continue people treating people on online consults, picking them up and advancing them, sending them back to their urologists and their cities, all they come over here and get treated. It was, it was more to enthuse ourselves to look at how we will, will, will not postpone ourselves. So friends, as they come to a close, my last few sentences are, number one, to look at not postpone or not miss out a consult, which could be a possible consult that you and I knew. I will not look at continue treating UTI the way I was treating for myself. I was not going to be treating an incontinence and still continue to be incontinent. I would not continue to be treating myself with prostate medications and still continue to have a poor flow. I will then have to revisit the whole story and see my urologist. If I'm taking medicines for prostate and my urinary flow is not good, what am I busy doing? One day I may land up with retention of urine. So it is all about taking something to a logical conclusion, be it a UTI, be it a diabetic cystopathy, be it a prosthetic enlargement and a prosthetic occlusion, or be somebody who has got a UTI and pick up an incontinent, um, a stricture urethra or a phimosis. So important for us to not only treat the uh, smoke, but also to quench the fire completely and make it possible that our urological concerns which happen around is unfortunately many a times delayed. It's delayed because we postpone and we don't identify ourselves. Awareness, therefore, is the key that if there's changes happening in my body, in my organ systems, in my capabilities, in my sexuality, in my erectile function, in my uh, urinary issues, then probably I'll see my doctor in time. And that's where this entire aspect was aimed today for the last one hour. Exactly. It's, it's 21.03. It started at 21.05. It's time to come back to you and wake you up that missed your logical consult can be a disaster. Missed your logical consult or postponed something where you had a bleeding one month or one year ago, and then suddenly you find that there is a hydrourethral nephrosis and a stone is blocking your ureter. A doctor can do only this much. The hydronephrosis will not resolve even if he has treated your stone. Therefore, all kidney stones need to be treated. They should not be left alone and waited for them to be melted around. A doctor who does a flexible ureteroscopy, a doctor who treats all this with a PCNL, a doctor who treats your UTI, not by only looking at your cultures, but examines you, evaluates you, looks at the causes of UTI, looks at your obstruction, interviews you and picks up the reasons for your UTI is an important doctor for you. So therefore, friends, and my colleagues in, 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 in medical fraternity, it's important for our patients not to miss out urological concerns, that you are ambassadors for the subject, which is as large as dial you for urology. I salute all of you today on this important um, Monday um, uh, evening where we try to complete a month of May and almost to get half the year getting over, we still continue to see a lot of postponed and missed content. Friends, I come to a close. Thank you so much for being there on this important aspect of not missing out your logical concerns and taking it to the next level where we'll see our doctors in time. Thanks, uh, Reddy's Lab and team who has actually been at the back helping us out to continue the kind of reach out to the society during the pandemic and after the pandemic where we continue to reach out to you on aspects where we enthuse you and treat you in time and pick you up in time. Good luck. Have a great evening and a great week ahead. Thank you so much.